one thing that I thought was interesting was that statue, that ice sculpture that he made, because I hadn't heard that story. Mm. And I'll be honest, when he said that, one of the things, the, o- the, the only thing that came to my mind was, so how did you how did you keep the pipe from getting hot and melting the ice? Yeah, great question. We should get him back on and ask that. I imagine that they use some form of insulation because they showed it on national news and it was right because it was up for a while. Super effective. Yeah. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, maybe that was why Al Gore's mouth was so big in the statue. Right. Maybe or in the sculpture it started normal size and just melted. Right. From the smoke. But yeah, really interesting piece of art. And just to think about as a political statement, this idea that people are blowing smoke out of their mouths. And then ironic that he's doing the very thing that they know want him to do by senselessly pumping gas into the air and emitting carbon emissions. But it's just, for me, it's so interesting the interplay of free speech over politics and that that's an expression of speech that's a constitutionally Mm. protected right but i have a feeling that some of our friends in dc who support climate change agendas would try to restrict that and would absolutely tear him down on social media for daring to commit such a treasonous useless waste of resources and just harming the environment for no reason. So what are your thoughts on just, what's the responsible limit of free speech? And then also what's the responsible limit of limiting free speech? And why do we see such a disregard and disrespect for the First Amendment when it comes to controversial issues? It's a really good question. You know, we talked a little bit about that during the interview, this um, encroachment recently by government and especially by the judicial system into what used to be widely recognized, constitutionally protected, not only free speech rights, but I would even say journalism rights. So you'll remember the interview that we did here on stand with Naomi Wolf. For those who didn't catch it, this was a while ago. She's a journalist who said some pretty, I think, um, and while the things were controversial, they weren't inflammatory. And and she also was canceled. She was dropped by all of her media publications. And her career was totally destroyed, totally destroyed by the leftists and progressives who support an agenda rather than support finding the truth. And she was asking a question. She was saying that we need to look into this more. Something's going on. So she was supporting essentially what we would call journalism. Mm -hmm. And so, and and it was on social media. This wasn't something that was published. And it goes to your question of where is that, where is that balance? Uh, We recently ran into this with our family where I engaged in free speech activities and then someone filed a frivolous complaint about it before a government commission. And the staff decided that that needed to be fined $27,000 and they, then they offered, you know, well, I could pay the fine, which would have been less than the lawyer fees to challenge it, or we have to fight it all the way. We had to make the tough choice that if we don't fight, the individual doesn't fight against the encroachment by government on free speech rights, then who does? There's not some free speech police that come in and say, oh, did your free speech rights get violated? We're here to rescue you. It was really given to us, the Constitution was given to us by our founders as our right to defend and protect. The problem is that our right to defend and protect, it comes at a really big cost, which is part of the reason why I think that the Declaration is signed, our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor, they were foreshadowing to us, by the way, this is what it's going to cost. And they ended up paying that price, and we ended up paying a price to defend too. By the way, we were unanimously vindicated at the end that it was free speech rights. The the complaint was completely baseless and thrown out, but it came at a cost. And I think that you're right that uh, there shouldn't have been any kind of, the government staff that investigated should have just said at the beginning, this is baseless and thrown it out and it shouldn't have cost us anything. But it did go all the way, even to the point of us threatening having to take it up to the Alaska Supreme Court in order to get the result that we needed in order to have this 
have the outcome that was deserved and just. I think we're seeing this happen all across America right now. Yeah. There definitely needs to be harsher punishment for parole violators, Steve. And world peace. And world peace. But <laughs> it's just, I remember there was, there was something, I think it was something that Biden did a couple of years ago. Maybe it was some mandate that he did. And at the time it was extremely controversial. It was probably a COVID mandate. And I remember, I think a couple months later, maybe even up to a year later, it was overturned and deemed unconstitutional. That's exactly it had right. Already affected Done and impacted damage. so many things. You're absolutely so right. Rights. I remember I was like 14 or 15 at the time, and I just sat there stumped, just like in the thinking man position. Like, so, <laughs> so which genius Brainiac founding father designed the system where we write laws before we determine if we're even well, allowed to told, enforce the laws? So he was, some well, of it, this it's, stuff. It's, it's not just him. It's, it's laws that are proposed by the legislator all the time where it's like the Supreme Court literally exists to say, oh, wait, no, these laws are unconstitutional. Like, right. Why do we pass laws and begin enforcing them through the executive branch before we verify that they're actually constitutional through the judicial branch? Shouldn't we have the judicial branch be reviewing these We laws? actually have a legal office in the executive branch that acts as an internal court system to vet. And there also is a legal office in Congress that tells them yes or no. And that is part of our problem in the breakdown right now. You're, you, you're right on. The problem with this is, so two examples, Biden was told, it's not like this stuff's hard. I mean, as someone who went to school a quarter of a century ago to study it, you can smell a rotten constitutional law from a country away. So when they pass something in D.C. and I'm like, that's not constitutional. It's not like this is hard. It, only the hard stuff is supposed to go to the U.S. Supreme Court. Right. And so he wrote this unconstitutional law and was told that's not constitutional. And the response from the administration was, well, well, we don't care. Well, right. We're going to get as far as we can until the Supreme Court can shut it down, knowing that our judicial system works at the speed of a snail. That's illegal. Uh, but, and what's our remedy as people? Our, our remedy is the ballot box. And that also happens every four years. That's also a snail like process. And to your point, you know, you're here going, wait, wasn't there a law he passed? How many people out there remember? Didn't they intentionally impose unconstitutional laws to push their illegal, unconstitutional agenda on Americans? They intentionally violated the constitutional right of every American and got away with it. And doesn't that break the oath of office? You, and what's the consequence? And similarly, U.S. Congress passed an unconstitutional law, which was overturned. And there was a question posed to one of the leaders of the bill and, and in the media. And he said, yeah, we think that this is probably unconstitutional, but that's for the Supreme Court to decide. No, it's not. You have an oath and obligation as a leader, I would say as a servant of the people of the United States, to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States above all else. And if you're not going to, then not only have you violated the oath of office, but isn't that somewhere along the line of treason? If you're out there intentionally violating the U.S. Constitution as you fulfill your duties as a representative or U.S. senator, then you need to be kicked out of office. Like This is what we're supposed to be impeaching people for. Not because they called out an illegal association between the Bidens and the leaders of Ukraine, which is now being being absolutely substantiated by the bipartisan House Oversight Committee. These are the things that, to your point, what is the the remedy for the people? You got me on my soapbox. I'm so glad. Where did that soapbox go? I thought we brought it today. I'm so glad that you pointed out the fact that as people who are supposed to be leading the government of the United States, we really don't have much opportunity to hold the the legal counsel in the Department of Justice and the legal counsel for U.S. Congress, and the White House Counsel's Office accountable for giving them the legal advice necessary, enforcing good legal advice, and instead waiting for the U.S. Supreme Court, who, by the way, right now, I think is actually doing a pretty good job of yeah. coming out with balanced judicial opinions. Uh, some of our our circuit courts are, you know, are still leaving a little bit to be desired, but on balance, the U.S. Supreme Court seems to be coming out with I've, I've protecting the Constitution. Lately, yeah. mm -hmm. I thought the I thought it's been very solid, and I think one of the issues that I'll just touch on because I don't care about 
the future and what people think about me is just January 6th. And everyone gets so touchy whenever anyone brings up January 6th and the quote unquote riots. And I don't understand that at all because for me, it's just like, say whatever you want about who was rioting and what groups they were a part of and who dressed up as who. For the large part, it was mostly peaceful. And also they were all allowed into the Capitol. And by also, Capitol Police. By Capitol Police. And also, regardless of what you, like there's, there's no such thing as an insurrectionist in America. And I think the remedy for this issue where government moves too slow, but also people are wildly frequently abusing the constitution and destroying the country that has been created and the values we've all agreed upon is when government becomes destruction destructive to these means and ends, it is the right and obligation of the people to establish a more perfect government. And That's, where do you get that from? That is from the Declaration of Independence. You have a moral obligation to take a stand for your country mm -hmm. and to improve government. And as you said, it's laid out in the Declaration of Independence of what we have to do when our government is refusing to be held accountable to the people. Yeah. The As we know here in America, the government only gets its power from the consent of the governed. So when that is no longer happening, then there has to be a means to hold them accountable. Otherwise, we just slip into another autocracy, another tyranny, another Britain, monarchy. Uh, another monarchy, another form of government that's already been tried and failed. And we know what that looks like. And we are contending for a form of government that is led and governed by the people who are inherently powerless other than by a, a group of elected leaders who are held accountable by the people.